Let's get this show on the road. We're going to go over some of the basics, the parts, what comes with this. This is the Brother CS7000i. It's a very basic entry-level model. It's pretty reasonably priced. And one thing I like about this brand in particular is that a lot of the parts and functions are fairly similar. Even if you don't have this specific model, you should be able to follow along. This is the arm of the sewing machine here. This is the bed of the sewing machine. And this is the hand wheel. We'll be going over some of the parts, power on off button. And this is the power cord plug right here where you plug it in. And then on the back here, you'll find information on your model and your serial number. And then this spot is for your foot pedal. Another thing I like about this particular machine is that it has a free arm. So there is a part in the front here and this snaps on and off. It serves a few different purposes. You can actually store items in here. And this also, this is the free arm here. So if you're sewing things in the round, like you're doing uh, cuffs or like a skirt, there's an area underneath here so that everything kind of fits around the free arm, which is why it's called a free arm. So you can take this off or you can leave it on. This is your needle plate here. This is the quick set bobbin case. Really nice feature here. This pops in and out. This gray plastic part is your presser foot lever. So this is what you can use to lift the presser foot up or put it back down. This machine comes with a little screwdriver. So you can replace the needle by undoing this screw here. And you can also remove this presser foot holder. This one comes with quite a few different feet. I do have a separate video on what all of the feet do that come with the Brother CS7000i. And then to snap the foot back on, you just uh, leave it in place and lower the presser foot and it automatically snaps back on like this. This is the power cord and this end plugs into the machine. And then obviously this end, you will plug into your electrical outlet. That should be fairly self-explanatory. These shapes match up. So you just have to push this in here and then plug in the machine. To turn the machine on, just use the on off button here on the side and you'll see everything starts to light up. We can also go ahead and plug in this foot pedal that comes with the machine. So I will be keeping this up on the table just so you can see what's going on here. There is a little built-in handle on this machine as well. And to plug in the foot pedal, just do that right here. Now we're all good to go. And now that the machine is on, you can see this LCD display. It's not the most high-tech thing, but it works. And you'll see there's a few different like plus minus buttons here. Okay, so this one will change the stitch number. So over here, you've got your stitch selection here. So let's say I wanna do stitch like number seven. Uh, this one changes the stitches by increments of one at a time. And then the button on the left switches the increments by 10. So it'll go, you know, 16, 26. This model does come with quite a few built-in stitches. So here, this is the stitch number, and then it also tells you what presser foot you need, which is pretty handy. The kind of default all-purpose foot is J. So if I wanted to do stitch 36, I would need to switch to foot A. So all of the presser feet are labeled. You can just take a look at each presser foot when you select a stitch. The machine tells you what presser foot you should have in, so you don't accidentally use the wrong one. So let me go back to stitch 00. That's the one I use the most, just because it's basically just a straight stitch. So this is the stitch number, this is the presser foot you need, and then these two numbers here, this is the stitch length and the stitch width. So the stitch length is basically how long the stitch is. And then the stitch width, that would apply if you're doing like a zigzag stitch. It all You can also use it to change the needle position. So here, I'll zoom out a little bit. So if I change the stitch length, so say I change it to like four or five, this will be very long stitches. Like, so they'll be, they won't be very close together. They'll be very far apart. If that's what you want, you can do that. And you can also change the stitch width. So if you're doing a zigzag stitch, that's when it really matters, but it can also come in handy because you can change the needle position. So you see when I'm changing the stitch width, the needle is moving. So you can also use it if you want your needle position in a certain spot. So, but zero is the default typically for the stitch 
with obviously with a straight stitch that's just your basic stitch the stitches aren't wide because it's a single stitch but say i was doing stitch uh four so let's go up to four this is where the stitch would go like that so that's a zigzag and you can see on the little menu here so for four this so this is a zigzag stitch and a few more functions to talk about this is the stitch speed so you can sew faster or slower i kind of like to sew slow this is your needle up down button so it depends on if you want it to be up or down in your you know whatever you're sewing this is the reverse button so if you hold this while you're sewing you'll sew backwards and then this is the start stop button I believe on this one, you can sew without the foot pedal. So the machine will detect whether the foot pedal is plugged in or not. If the foot pedal is plugged in, I'm not sure this will work. Okay, yeah, you're getting an error here. So in order to use this as your start stop button, you can't have the foot pedal plugged in. All right, so I'm gonna need to restart this. So, hey, good to know. Whenever you turn the machine on and off, it will just reset it to the default of stitch zero, zero, and then the settings. It has a thread cutter on the side. All right, so you can cut your thread here. And if you're wondering, how do I remove all of the feed? Just put your presser foot lever in the upper position. And then there's a little button on the back of the presser foot holder. And then if you push that, your presser foot will come off. These are the Brother brand bobbins that work with many of Brother's machines. I highly recommend if you are gonna be sewing, you get yourself a couple bags of these because every time you do a different thread color, you're going to want to have your bobbin thread match. So you may end up having like 20 or more bobbins that are kind of like half full. So here's one I've got ready to go, but I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin since we're here. It's very easy and I will be sewing with two contrasting colors of thread. Sewing machines have an upper thread and then they have a bobbin thread. How sewing machines work is that the threads interlock, which is like the stitch, and then one thread will show up on the bottom, the bobbin thread, and then the other thread will show up on the top, that's the upper thread. So I'll be doing the bobbin thread in green and then the upper thread in purple. And hopefully that helps you get a good visual idea of how sewing works. And again, this is not super complicated, but I know it can be a little bit intimidating at first. So I wanna to try to take that fear factor away if you're like kind of afraid to try sewing. To wind the bobbin is actually really easy. This spool pin can actually retract. So that is kind of nice for storage and whatnot. If you just put the thread on the spool pin, it can get very noisy. So I actually recommend putting like a little felt disc with a hole in it and that'll muffle the sound quite a bit. That'll really help. You will put the thread on the spool holder with the thread coming out like this. And then there's this little guide here and you're just going to run it through this little piece here. And there's even pictures, like literally, this is fairly good explanations, even on the machine itself. And then run it through this little tension guide here. You're gonna run it back to this little bobbin holder here. All of these bobbins have a little hole in top. I personally find it easiest to run the thread up through the hole. So the thread should be sticking out the top. Not super impossible, here we go. All right, so see, I've got the thread coming through and out the top. Put it down on the bobbin holder here and it'll kind of click in place. So let's just slide to the right here. And now you can wind the bobbin. So I'm just going to take my foot pedal and I'm just gonna press it here and it'll start to wind like this. And after a little while, you don't really need to hold it, but at first you do need to hold the thread so it doesn't just come untangled. I've got my little snips and I'm just gonna clip this off. I do sell these scissors, by the way, in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. If you're interested, they do come in handy. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I don't need this totally full, but at a certain point it will slow down and stop when the bobbin gets filled. Since I'm just doing a test, I'm not going to wind the whole thing. So when it's done, just slide this back to the left and lift out the bobbin, and then you'll trim the thread again. And now let's drop the bobbin into the bobbin case. We're working our way down here. This is the bobbin case and you'll probably want your presser foot to be up. Otherwise it kind of gets in the way. Also, you'll notice there are more pictures here. So again, picture guides everywhere. That's what I do like about the Brother brand. They really try to make it easy. This little cover here, it pops out. So there's a little over here and just pull it to the side. Just set it aside for a minute. And then whenever you're putting your bobbin into your bobbin case, you'll always want the thread hanging down on the left side. So it'll resemble the letter P like this. This is how your thread should be hanging off. 
Okay, so to insert, it's very easy. Just literally drop it into a little case like this. Oh, and every once in a while, you will need to clean this out. And then you'll see this little thread guide here. There's literally thread guides everywhere. So just slide this through here. And then there's a thread cutter here. And then just put this little cover back in. Now we'll do the upper thread and I'm going to do that in this purple color here. Similar in that we're just gonna put this on the spool holder and then run it through this little metal guide here. I'm going to try to include a close up here as well. All right, so you'll just run it through this guide here, run it through this guide here, and then up to the left. And then you'll see this little metal part here. You're gonna want that to be at the utmost position here. Run the, the thread up and over to the left and it'll catch on it. So it's like a little hook. We're getting close to the needle. At this point, it's also a good idea to drop your presser foot too. So there's a little metal guide here that you need to run the thread through. I will hold the thread between my left and right fingers and then just work it through this guide here. Also, if you do use the needle threader, the needle needs to be in the highest position it can be. So you see how it's lower here? You wanna raise it. This is a little hard to explain, so I'm gonna try to show you how the needle threader works, but it's this little part here and then it's this lever. So I'm gonna try to And sometimes it may take you a few tries. Okay, here we go. And then I always like to take my snips and then pull the rest of the thread back. I like to run my thread through and behind the presser foot like this. Another thing I will also do is I will pull my bobbin thread up. So I'm gonna take the upper thread and I'm gonna hold on to it with my hand here. And I'm going to pull the hand wheel towards me to run the needle down into the machine. It will actually pull up the thread. So you see, Doing this pulled the thread up, so now my bobbin thread and my upper thread are in the same place. By the way, while we're here, I'll also show you how to remove and insert a needle in case you need to change out the needle or in case your machine doesn't have one already installed. You'll need a little screwdriver. Most machines will come with one. There's a little needle screw here. You can loosen the screw with the screwdriver and then the needle will slide out. You can also use your finger. I do want to point out it can be a little confusing determining what type of needles you need. A lot of machines like the Brothers will take the like standard universal needles, but some machines have some unusual types. This one has a flat back to it. This part of the needle is curved, but then there's just a flat part. On the Brother machines, you'll want the flat portion of the needle to be facing back. Let's put this needle back in place. I just wanted to demonstrate because I know if you're here watching a beginner sewing video, you might not know how to do this. So you just slide the needle up into this little slot here and then tighten the screw. So you'll see, and there's a little metal stopper here. So just slide the needle up until it can't go any further. Tighten the screw with your finger. And then when you can't anymore, use the screwdriver to tighten it even more. Now you're at the point where you can actually start sewing. And I've got a scrap piece of canvas here that I'm going to test this out on. Everything's on the default settings. So I just wanted to get you to the point where you could just at least get up and running and know what the basic parts are. Also in the description box, I will include a link to the Brother CS7000i operation manual. If your machine didn't come with one, like you got it used or someone gave it to you, you can download the manual for a lot of different Brother machines. All right, so I'm gonna lift up the presser foot, put my fabric under it, and I like to hold my threads out towards the back just to, again, eliminate like thread nests. So I've, I'm holding them. And then you just have to press down your foot, foot pedal and the machine will sew. You may not be an expert sewist, but at least you got started. So to get your project out from underneath, I will turn the hand wheel towards me. So again, always turn it towards you. Lift it in the highest position in a little bit more. Lift up your presser foot and then you should be able to pull the project out and you, there shouldn't be like a lot of tension. Like you should be able to do it pretty easily. Here is the upper thread. That's why I specifically chose two different colors. And here is the bottom, the green. Really like here, I shouldn't be able to see purple thread. And then on the purple side, I shouldn't be able to see green. If you do, that means you have a tension issue. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is because tension is important. This little dial here is the upper thread tension. 
and normally I keep it between three and four and I find that works for me. You will need to adjust it depending on the project, how heavy your fabrics are, what kind of fabric it is, and how many layers. I have a whole other video just about sewing machine tension. So again, I will link that below as well. I also have a playlist on using this sewing machine and specific videos for each thing. Like I have a whole video on how to use all the feet, another one on like the basic stitches. If you're totally new, I would recommend checking those out. I just wanted this to be like a real quick down and dirty basic sewing machine guide for anyone who's like, I just need to know how to use this thing right now.